if you could give a little little background about yourself and your company that would give people a frame of reference for today. Sure, yeah, happy to do that. So um, I'm Karen Krishnan. I'm a research microbiologist by training. Um, I've been in this dietary supplement nutritional world for now almost 20 years, so getting old. Um, you know, so I've been an, a full on adult for over 20 years now. <laughs> but you're still 25. So how? <laughs> exactly right. I was genius baby started when I was five in the, <laughs> in the supplement industry. Um, but I, I started with a research organization. So I actually formed a clinical trial organization. I started in this industry with the idea of, of designing, running and, and, um, conducting really smart, affordable, clinical trials for nutritional products to boost the science around nutritional products. Um, and that's what really kind of got me deep into the belly of this industry because I got to work with lots of different companies. Um, I started getting hired on as a consultant for product development and um, you know scientific advisory roles. Um, and then I founded uh, about seven years ago, co-founded uh, Microbiome Labs, which is a company focused on really enhancing understanding and, and taking advantage of the power of the microbiome uh, to, to achieve wellness and, and real, great, sustained, resilient wellness. Um, you know, and, and the idea is that the microbiome is probably the largest part of what controls your outcomes uh, within mm. your body, whether it's wow. mental, physical, you know, everything. Um, and so without really understanding or utilizing the microbiome, we really struggle to make progress in health and wellness. And so um, we've uh, named our company Microbiome Labs with the, with the mantle and the idea that we're going to be heavily focused on the research, heavily focused on creating tools that will really help people. And we want to make those tools accessible to all people. Um, so it's not just, um, you know, really high level functional medicine thing that it, most people can't afford or can't achieve. So that's why doing these kind of interviews are a really important part of it for me, because, you know, I want to get my science and knowledge and information out to people directly. So they're empowered with this information and then they can make choices and decisions to, to improve their overall health. Mm, that's very well explained. Yeah. I think that's a, a concept that we really uh, some concepts there we really espouse as well. So we're, we're not doing research studies, but we certainly, when we write blogs and stuff, we show all the research behind. Mm -hmm. So it, so it's not just our opinion. It's, you know, it's, right, it's, right. Back to, yeah. it's backed up. Uh, and the, the kind of taking it into your own hands, we actually have a new banner on our site and it's something like empowering people to, you know, detox naturally or something. And it's, that's a lot of what we do. Our audience is so so informed there's always more you can learn about the, the gut and the, just the body in general but the gut is there's a lot there there's a lot still emerging in, in the research as you know yeah to, just to put that into perspective that's an important point so in the last five years we've had over fifty thousand published studies on the microbiome wow and that's in that's absolutely insane and we are just scratching the surface uh, we actually published five papers in the last six months ourselves, um, including the most recent publication just a few weeks ago uh, for a study that was done at Cleveland Clinic on the spore-based probiotic Megaspore on how it battles with pathogens like uh, Clostridium difficile, C. diff, in the gut. Um, so yeah, there's, there's so much to learn, so much coming out. And yeah. that rate of research is not going to slow down or stop because, like I said, with that 50,000 publications, we're just scratching the surface of the microbiome. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I may have mentioned on another webinar when I went to Chinese medicine school, I graduated in 2003. Oh my gosh, there was such little information about, you know, the gut and food sensitivities and stuff. You know, there is, there's some good stuff because historically there is some good stuff. And you mentioned how the the gut is key to all health. And there was a, a like a, a point in history where Chinese medicine is really focused on that. It was called mm -hmm. the earth school. So, you know, there just certainly is a lot there, but the con life was very different back then. You know, there mm -hmm. weren't pesticides and food additives and oh, like right. blue light and there's just everything so different. So I think this is so 
important. Yeah, I mean, they didn't live in an antimicrobial world, right? So True. we we are a microbial construct. We're basically made up of microbes predominantly. And, and then we've taken this microbial construct, this what I call a walking, talking rainforest, and put it in an antimicrobial world. So we, we've designed a world that, it, that works against how we have evolved um, as an organism. And so, um, so it becomes really important to understand what are all the things that are impacting our ecosystem and, and how that leads to symptoms and disease. And, um, you know, and how can we mitigate some of that so that uh, we improve our resilience and uh, improve our outcomes. Awesome. So yeah, that's a good segue. We're going to focus at least to start out on the on leaky gut. It's sort of a uh, almost like a buzzword I think a lot of people know about, which a lot of people, a lot of people do have it. I mean, we test mm -hmm. people and we see different things all the time. It's, um, but it's not, it doesn't occur in isolation by any means. So I'd love it if you would just in, in your words define like what leaky gut, gut is and, and how it how it could develop. Yeah. So a couple of really important things to understand about leaky gut. Um, number one, like you said, it doesn't occur in isolation, but it also doesn't occur overnight. It's a process, right? Um, and the gut is a dynamic system, meaning it can be leaky at times, but not leaky at other times. Um, and there's a degree of leakiness as well, right? So you can have profoundly damaged gut lining and barrier structures in a certain amount of your gut and have the rest of it still functioning like normal. So that is part of the progression of leaky gut. It's, it's not at all unusual to have younger people having measurable leaky gut, but not really knowing and realizing it, right? Because the proportion of their gut being leaky is small. One of the analogies I can think of is like, let's say you had eczema, um, but your eczema was really a teeny tiny patch on once, uh, un, uh, you know, uh, an, a non-exposed uh, part of your body, right? So, so let's say somewhere on like your lower back or somewhere that would be covered most of the time, you wouldn't necessarily pay attention to it, but it's there. It's signaling that there's a problem and that that problem will likely get worse. Right, and now you might end up with one or two patches of eczema somewhere in your body, still unnoticeable, so you may not pay that much attention to it. And then eventually when it becomes apparent, when it's on somewhere like your hands or your neck or your face, um, or somewhere that people will notice and you see every single day, then all of a sudden it becomes something that you pay attention to. But it's been progressing over time, right? So same thing with leaky gut. You can have portions of your gut that are leaky, that are profound, meaning that it does have an impact on your overall outcomes, but you may not realize it just yet. It's asymptomatic or what we call uh, subclinical. Uh, subclinical meaning that it's not a realized effect, but it's causing problems underlying in your system. And it's setting you up for further leaky gut and, and higher risk for chronic illness. So that's, that's a really important kind of concept to wrap your head around. I would estimate, and this is based on studies that are available and based on our own studies that we've done, that at least 80% of adult Americans have a, a pretty significant degree of leaky gut, right? The CDC shows that 60% of American adults have at least one chronic illness, right? At least one. 40% have multiple chronic illnesses. So of that 60%, all of them have leaky gut because all of those common chronic wow. illnesses that we talk about, um, like heart disease, diabetes, um, autoimmune conditions, and so on, those are the most common chronic illnesses. All of those are being driven by leaky gut, right? And then you've got a good proportion of people without any noticeable chronic illnesses that also have leaky gut. So I would say easily 80% of people listening, if you're an adult, and you live in, in North America, you likely have some degree of leaky gut. And that only gets worse over time and sets you up for more and more, for more and more damage. That also becomes really prevalent and, uh, and an issue in a time like this when we're talking about you know, immune function and we've got this pathogen floating around and people are nervous about it. Leaky gut plays a really important role in that as well. 
Great. I'll, I'll talk about, and you can piggyback me if you like, like kind of the physical description of, of leaky gut, which is like the top layer of the gut has these, this thin layer of cells and they can, they should be tight, mostly tight. Sometimes they do naturally, like you said, go, it needs to open up to kind of like let some detox process happen, but mostly they should be pretty tight. Uh, and that keeps peptides and things that are being digested from coming through and into the bloodstream before they're done being processed, I guess you could say. So that, that's kind of the core of it. But I, in my opinion, there's a few things that go along with that. Like sometimes we test and we, we don't see zonulin, that en enzyme that creates that gap, always raised. That, that number goes up and down, that zonulin score. But what we see here in mm, probably 95% of the time is that mucosal layer being too low. Uh, mm -hmm. There's not enough of that. And to me, like, that's kind of like part of it, because that's also part of your protection. And then another element I don't think gets talked about enough is like the inflammation. So you need, you need nutrients to come into your bloodstream, but you don't want things that aren't ready to, to come through. So if you have too much inflammation, nutrients can't come through and, and the villi uh, are kind of how can I say kind of hampered, they're not like they should be little fingers all like um, you know, interacting with what's coming through your gut. And that often is, is hampered. So kind of physically, you can think about it that way. And then there's all this other stuff going on with infections mm -hmm. and biofilm. Yeah. And like, so it's, you know, we can think about, okay, well, I know one step is this, this gap, but there's so many other things going on. I know you kind of have a, a step-by-step -step process you use to rebuild the gut. I wonder if you could talk about the role of, you know, other infections and other conditions that you see kind of coming along with leaky gut. Yeah. Um, so let me, let me pick it back on your, your description of, uh, of the leaky gut, the structures themselves. Um, one thing that's important to note for people is that your digestive tract is a tube, right? It's a, it's a tube that's open on both ends. So in fact, when things are in your digestive tract, they're still considered to be outside of your body. They're not in your body yet. When, when things are considered to be in your body is when they go through the lining of that tube and then they enter the circulation. The circulation, there's a, there's a layer called the basolateral circulation or the lamina propria, which is, which is the inside part, the first inside part of your body. And then if it goes past that, it's entering your circulation. Um, so the tube in your system that, that op starts at the opening in the mouth and the, the upper respiratory tract and then ends with the with the uh, opening in the uh, in the anal cavity is all still outside of the body, right? So I have a, a, a diagram here I can use to show um, that hopefully will help people understand, right? So you look at this is what a healthy gut should kind of look at look like. This is a thick mucosa layer that is sitting on top of the intestinal epithelium of this is the lining. Oh, perfect. Intestinal I love that. Cells, right? Yeah. Okay. So this part is the lamina propria, which is the inside part of your body. The tube uh, will, would be up here. So if you think about your tube, uh, the lumen is the hole in the tube that's up here, right? So this is the mucosa layer. There's two distinct areas of the mucosa layer, mucin one and mucin two. And then this is the single cell layer that acts as the final barrier between things entering into your inside part of your body. So when food comes in, it all enters in this top part. It's called a lumen. And so most of the microbes that live in your gut live in this top part of the mucus layer called the mucin, mucin one layer. Um, and food comes in, it gets digested in this layer. The, the bacteria break it down to a certain degree. Your enzymes and all are secreted up here and it, it gets broken down. And then food particles are supposed to be able to move through. And when they get to the intestinal lining, um, the cells, the space in between the cells are supposed to be able to open up. The, the things that control that space are called the tight junction proteins. So they're supposed to be able to open up to allow certain nutrients in. Now, other nutrients like fat, uh, like dietary fats and fat soluble nutrients will actually go, will get picked up from this um, digesting area and brought through using shuttles, like um, they're called shilomicrons or lipid rafts, for example. So your body will produce these little rafts that, that go across, they'll pick up the nutrients and bring, and shuttle them across the line. So cool. 
right? So yeah, there's all these <laughs> transport mechanisms. Now, lots of vitamins like vitamin K27, for example, have specific transport uh, mechanisms. They have receptors that they'll bind onto the cell layer. And when, when, they, when they bind to the cell layer, then carriers will come up, grab them from the cell lining and take them to the liver where they can get processed and used and so on, right? So there's a lot of active transportation going on. And, and as Bridget mentioned, the microvilli, the little finger-like projections, add surface area to the digestive tract so that you have lots of surface area to absorb nutrients and so on. Now, one of the characteristics of malabsorption is when you start losing these finger-like projections, when they go from this down to getting flattened, the scientific term for that is called uh, enteropathy, right? So when your gut is damaged over and over again, like in the, in the case of celiac disease or people with severe gluten intolerances, their gut or HIV, for example, or other gut inf infections uh, or inflammatory bowel disease, all of these things that damage your gut lining, you get those finger-like projections shortening and shortening over time. So you lose surface area to your digestive tract. And when you lose surface area, you have less area by which nutrients can be absorbed. So you already have malabsorption, right? So that's one of the things. The other thing that occurs is that if these, these tight junctions remain open too much, you get a flooding in of things that aren't supposed to be in there, which triggers an inflammatory immune response in this area. That inflammatory immune response will damage the cells over time which then creates a significant loss of barrier. And when you have these cells damaged and things just kind of leak through non-specifically on a regular basis. Another area that gets uh, compromised is there is a polarity difference between this part of the, of the gut lining and this part of the gut lining, right? There's an osmolaritic gradient. So that gradient, that change in, uh, so in concentration of solubles actually facilitates the movement of certain nutrients through these cells. So that's called a transcellular pathway. The movement in between the cells are called the paracellular pathway. So larger molecules of, of nutrients will move in between the cells. Smaller molecules like certain types of vitamins and minerals and all that will move through these cells. When your gut lining is damaged, you lose that osmolaritic gradient and those nutrients cannot end up moving through the cell because they count on the difference in concentration from one side to the other in order to move through. So lots of things within, within the ability to absorb nutrients get heavily compromised when your gut is leaky and damaged, right? Now, the other part that's significant about leaky gut is this mucus layer. So as you can see in this diagram, we show most of the bacteria up here, right? In this liquidy, uh, thinner version layer of the mucus layer. This inside part, as you see, there's not a whole lot of bacteria in there. The reason for that is this inner part is far more sterile than the outer part. Mm -hmm. It's a thicker layer. It acts more like a jello almost, uh, rather than kind of a syrupy layer. And so it acts as a physical barrier to your good normal bacteria from entering too close to the cell line, to this intestinal cell line. Because the, the thing is your body freaks out when you've got too many microbes moving into this inside space because your body thinks you're gonna go into a blood infection or sepsis, right? That there's gonna be a flood of microbes entering into your system and you're gonna get infected in your blood. And so anytime this layer gets compromised, gets eaten away, and you get too many of your own commensal microbes moving into this layer, you're going to start triggering lots of inflammatory response constantly in this region. And that completely compromises nutrient absorption. It damages all of these cells. It prevents this layer from getting repaired efficiently. And it causes um, immune dysfunction in your body because everything that enters this area, food particles, environmental particles, and all that, get an immune response which means that your gut is then training the rest of your immune system anytime it sees those particles to uh, elicit an inflammatory immune response, right? So that compromising is really important. This is kind of what it looks like when everything goes nuts, right? You get an eating away at this inner layer. <laughs> yeah, you get a translocation of all of those bacteria, viruses, protozoa, all kinds of stuff to the inner part. Because they're now in the inner part, you get recruitment of innate immune cells, which cause an inflammatory response, which eventually 
just breaks up and, and kills off these inner uh, lining cells, right? So now this gut is completely leaky, meaning things are just leaking through, entering into circulation all the time. Uh, and this is a disease condition. Now this can occur when you're 14 years old, 15 years old, it can occur in certain sections of the bowel and you may never notice it, mm -hmm. but it co continues to progress. Imagine all of these adjacent areas start to look like this, right? Then by the time you're 30, you've got a significant amount of your, uh, your uh, intestinal uh, length looking like this, then all of a sudden you start experiencing metabolic issues, allergies, food sensitivities, autoimmune disease, mood disorders, all of these things that are a result of this. So hopefully that helped kind of explain how things go. No, that was like an awesome mini lesson and people watching may want to go back and watch that section again. I'm actually going to take out some clips of this interview too, so we can have a little shorter ones on Instagram. So I'll, I'll post that for sure. That was a, yeah, a great explanation. I love, like when, when it comes down, you can just see, oh no. It's just like flooding <laughs> in. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's literally what happens, you know? So zonulin is, that that's one of the problems with zonulin is it's not always predictive of what's happening right. um, in, in the microbiome because you could have that kind of thing happening in certain sections of the gut and you'll never pick it up with the zonulin uh it's certainly in the stool so yeah you know you don't even really have to test for leaky gut because you can assume if you have any sort of health conditions at all you more than likely have leaky gut um it's just yeah. so prevalent and such a big driver of all of these problems yeah and who did i answer here kathleen was asking well what, what was that mark you were talking about it's the secretory IgA marker is the one that I really, when I see that low, which I almost always do, I'm like, we got to get it up. And that graphic was so perfect because you can't just focus on like the zonulin or the leaky gut definition. Like you need that strong mucosal layer. It's very protective. So yeah, uh, yeah like we can go in next to, to how to, how to heal these things. I guess that's not the right word I'm supposed to use. How to, re how to how to support healthy gut barrier. How to, yes. Um, and I, this part is the part where I, I think I want to play around with you a bit because I think your steps are a little different than what I do clinically. So I think we can kind of compare and contrast on like what we do. It might be interesting to people. I'm going to share my slides now. I pulled up a couple of your, um, your things. Yeah, so I'll show my slides now that I made them. Uh, so here's a few of your graphics about uh, restoring the gut, if that might be helpful for people as you talk through it. Yeah. Um, so do you want me to go through our steps first? Yes, please. Okay. So yeah, we've basically broken it down to these three steps. Uh, the first one being the recondition, which is what you see under number one. Number two is reinforce. And then number three, which is not listed here, but it's, it's called rebuild. I couldn't right. find that one, so I just stepped the okay. megamucosa. <laughs> okay, perfect. So think about megamucosa as step number three, which is rebuild. Now, again, you know, people are unique, dynamic, different. This is just a very general outline of, of what you could do. But in many cases, we do adjust these the, the, the steps, uh, depending on the person's particular condition. But the idea here is that when you look at the literature and you look at what we call the pathophysiology of barrier dysfunction, right? That's a very fancy way of saying how leaky gut happens. Um, the, when you look at the pathophysiology of it, it starts with dysbiosis, right? So it starts with a change in the microbiome. And that change can be characterized in a few different ways. One is typically you see a lowering of diversity of microbes in the gut, right? So as you start to see a shrinking of diversity, you start to see an increased risk for leaky gut. Number two, you start to see a lowering of the keystone strains that are really important in maintaining these structures. So these keystone strains actually provide um, the, the building blocks, the, the triggers, the stimulation for repairing the mucosa, repairing the intestinal epithelium and so on. Because what's, here's what's really interesting about it, right? We have this critical structure that I showed you, this mu these various mucosa layers, the tight junctions in between the cells, all of these things that are supposed 
to be functioning appropriately. And all of the structural components of those in terms of repair and restoration come from signals from the microbiome. So we can't really induce the repair of those things ourselves. So we need the appropriate microbes in place in order to be able to fix any of this stuff. So that's where we've shifted our focus from what was typically done in functional and natural medicine. We've gone to the, to the focus that, hey, wait a minute, this all starts with dysbiosis. It starts with a certain characteristic dysfunction in the microbiome, which means that we have to fix that first, right? So that's where the recondition idea comes from. The idea is that we have to recondition and change what the microbiome looks like. We have to bring back diversity. We have to increase the keystone strains. If there are pathogens that are known to eat away at that mucosal layer, which is one of the ways that leaky gut starts, then we have to control those pathogens. We have to um, uh, create competitive exclusion. So your commensal good bacteria will have a chance of, br of bringing down the, the population of, that, of those pathogens. So then the idea is, step one, recondition, we got to start fixing the dysbiosis. And as we start fixing the dysbiosis, we want to make those changes more permanent. And that's where we go to the reinforce. So the idea is that we're reinforcing this new microbiome um, distribution that you have in your gut. This increased diversity, this increased keystone strains, the lower levels of pathogens, that increase, uh, that change in the microbiome has to be reinforced so that it becomes more of your permanent looking microbiome. Because if not, the microbiome can continuously fluctuate back and forth between characteristic functionalities. And, and you know, you may start to resolve the leaky gut uh, for, for a moment and then within a week or so start going back to having dysbiosis and, and disproportionate leaky gut. So then once we change the microbiome, then we provide the microbiome with the really important tools to bring down the inflammatory response in the mucosa so the mucosa can repair, to provide the mucosa with the building blocks that it needs, the four key amino acids that it needs to rebuild that mucosal layer, and then also to, um, to, re to change the immune response within the mucosa itself because if there is continuous toxicity, if there's continuous inflammation in the mucosa, the gut lining can't repair at all. So that's why we have this general recondition, changing the microbiome, reinforce those positive changes, and then finally rebuilding the microbiome. But again, we do switch things around depending on the person's case. Yeah, yeah, and I think I just was looking up because you guys have the three R's in functional medicine. They have like the four R's, and they're like I'll just read them. It's remove, replace, reinoculate, repair. And our, I would say, in our clinic, it's a little similar, but yeah, things can kind of overlap. So I definitely, if I've run a lab test, uh, I start with remove, because uh, in in almost you know ninety five percent, there's stuff to remove. Um, so. We've got parasites and candida or, you know, bacterial overgrowth. Um, and then, so I start with, you know, you've got some products like the Mega Micro Balance for that, or I'll use some products like your kind of, I don't know if you want to call it sister companies, but friend companies, the Biocide, and, you know, we use some of their products. So depending on the infections, we use different products. Um, but sometimes at the same time, I'm using Mega IgG or Mega Mucosa, um, kind of depending on the person. You know, the Mega IgG is great for mopping up that mm -hmm. waste product that's coming through. It's also good for shoring up any potential leaky gut. Can be like a little constipating or kind of slow things down. So mm -hmm. sometimes I only use two capsules if that's all that's tolerated. Or So I just kind of depend. I love that product. I love that product. Yeah. Uh, also, the Mega Mucosa, I love during this teardown <laughs> stage sometimes because like the parasite to me, the parasite protocol can be really harsh. Even just the mm -hmm. biocidin can be a bit harsh. So just create, ha giving that protection while you're in there, stirring everything up, messing everything up, breaking down things, uh, I think it can feel very soothing. Yeah, yeah. And, and here's, here's our big um, move to change within the functional uh, medicine where, where they look at this, the steps of the remove first. Um, what, what we came out with was, was you have to do that both at the same time as you are 
improving the, the, the rest of the microbiome, right? So, uh, because a lot of the processes that you use to remove things will also harm the commensals, right? And yeah. that's the part that was forgotten is that we can go in and we can, we can kill and remove, kill and remove, um, and then try to rebuild. The problem with that is that that process of killing and removing will also hurt the commensals because none of the things that we're talking about are highly specific to just dysfunctional bacteria with the exception sure. of things like parasitic therapies can be very specific to, ther to parasites. Um, but for the most part, things will harm the good commensals as well, right? So our big sure. push was you should do it at the same time because not only then are you trying to support the commensal so that they don't get harmed too much. But one of the best ways to creating permanent change is allowing the commensals to take over that space, right? So this is where to me, uh, why, why a microbiologist's view on this is, is really critical versus uh, uh, the development of the clinical picture of this, right? So when you look at, uh, at a, a microbial ecology, let's say these are your commensals, and then these are your, your disruptive microbes, right? Whatever they are, fungus, uh, uh, bacteria, whatever they may be. Now you've got this person is in dysbiosis. So if you do step one and you're just kind of trying to knock these guys down constantly, you are gonna be knocking these down a little bit as well, right? But the thing is with any microbe, good, bad, or ugly, within about eight hours of knocking them down, they will come right back right? So you can keep putting the pressure on them. So what will happen is everything kind of gets knocked down a little bit, but then they'll keep fighting their way back. And uh, eventually what happens is you don't really change the proportion um, that significantly, right? So our thinking is that what you need to do is when you're knocking these down, you have to bring these up. So then they take over some of that real estate. And unless mm -hmm. they take over the real estate of these guys, you will never see permanent long-term change. Right, so if you're knocking them out, you have to bring these up at the same time. And the idea is that you keep shifting the proportions this way slowly, um, and then that change becomes more lasting and permanent. You can't just keep knocking everything down at the same time. So that's the microbial ecology part of it that's really important. And you can demonstrate this on plates and all that. We see it all the time when we do microbiome research or microbiology research, you know, it's not like these guys will get knocked down and then just go, okay, we're going away. And then now, hey, all of this empty real estate is ready for reestablishment, right? It doesn't work that way. Every square millimeter of your gut lining is going to be full of microbes all the time. And if you're knocking these down and just sitting and waiting for a period of, of bringing in the good guys, you're just going to get these guys growing right back up. How interesting. You yeah, know, you're so, giving me an idea. I almost could say, you know, when you purchase your gut test, it's probably omega-4. Once you've taken the test, you start taking the omega-4 while we wait for your results. Because um, there's kind of everybody could, you know, benefit from it. Um, yeah, and that's, that's what the omega-4 does. That's one of its critical functions is the, these guys are good commensals bringing those up. Uh, constantly and supporting them. And then the spores themselves will directly compete with these, with these dysfunctional bacteria, right? So you imagine the spores do this kind of ratio. Um, and we've shown that in, in clinical studies. Yeah, really cool. Um, let's see. So maybe I'll just kind of keep going. Hopefully people kind of got the big, the big picture on that. And we'll talk a little bit later about specific uses of different products. I found this nice um, image and I thought it might be a good segue into some other things. Bethany, who's on the call, suggested we might want to talk about the microbiome and depression and anxiety because that's kind of on the rise with this long-standing COVID situation. I was also wanting to talk a bit about um, sexual health and the microbiome and kind of like recurring recurrent candida infections and that kind of thing. Um, maybe just to get us started, Karen, if, if you want to just kind of say how the microbiome does indeed affect all these different systems and areas, like big picture. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the microbiome, you know, is obviously throughout the body, right? So the, the, the largest predominance of the bacteria are in your gut, but you do have a biome in every other part of your body. Your 
your eyes, your nose, your upper respiratory tract, your skin, your lungs, you know, every part of your system is covered in microbes. Um, and they all communicate with each other, right? So the gut microbiome seems to be able to communicate to other microbiomes within your system. Also, the gut microbiome produce a lot of metabolites and, and active compounds that are needed for our normal day-to-day -day function. For example, when it comes to mood and the brain, you know, the large amount of serotonin, the largest amount of serotonin, which is the happy hormones actually produced in the gut, um, a large proportion of dopamine, which is which triggers the reward centers in your body or in your brain, uh, is produced in the gut. Things like brain-derived neurotropic factor or GABA, all of these really important neurotransmitters that help your body deal with stress, help your brain, um, you know, assimilate to the uh, environment to the stress around you and all of that, all of those things are produced in the gut. And so a dysfunctional gut can lead to, um, in, in quite quickly to a, to a dysfunctional um, emotional response, right? And, and we see this with antibiotic use, for example, um, the fluoroquinolone antibiotic group, the, the newest um, broad spectrum antibiotic groups, one of the known side effects of it is a sudden onset of anxiety and panic. Um, yeah. So when you take it, right, it kills off bacteria to a certain degree, creates aberrant growth, meaning it allows certain pathogens to come back uh, faster. And, and that those pathogens can produce toxins that'll create anxiety and stress in your, in your mind. Um, the same thing we see with things like Campylobacter infection. They create one of the one of the known effects of Campylobacter infection is a sudden onset of panic disorders or or anxiety. So there's a big connection between the gut and how you perceive the world around you, your mood, your ability to handle stress, and all of that. Um, same thing with your um, sexual organs. Of course, virtually every hormone in your body is also produced in your gut. Um, you know, that, and that same with estrogen in the case of women, not only is estrogen production possible in the gut, but the recycling of estrogen mm -hmm. is controlled by the gut, right? So your level of estrogen in circulation is controlled in large part by the gut. Um, and then the gut microbiome and in the, in the mucosa, in the, in the, in the digestive tract speak to the microbiome in the vaginal tract. And so there's a connection there with that. If you have dysbiosis in the gut, you're going to be um, at a higher likelihood of having dysbiosis in the vaginal uh, mucosa, and which makes you more susceptible to things like yeast infections, bacterial vaginosis, which then can cause pay painful intercourse, can uh, disrupt um, you know, menstrual cycling and so on, and can even affect fertility because the vaginal microbiome will control f fertility um, to a certain degree. So it's all connected. It's all one big rainforest. Um, and the gut, you can think of the gut as kind of the central command center for all of these things. Awesome. Yeah, well, I want to speak to a couple of things you said. So earlier we talked about the mucosal layer, and I was saying how we often see it on people so low. And one of the reasons, and there can be other reasons, I think is just chronic emotional stress. Um, and, you know, that's just pretty common, like in today's world, you know, with so much stimulation, but I think with COVID, we can speculate it's, it's even higher. And I just want to share that for a few months, we really were barely selling any labs. I think everybody was kind of hunkering down and focusing on COVID. And then last month we had an explosion of hormone lab sales. And I was like, oh, I think people are, are like feeling it, A, and ready to kind of take action. So if you know you you know that your gut is an issue or mood is an issue or you know vaginal health which i'll talk about in a section is a second is an issue i would encourage you to test with us it's on sale this month um we have some other things going on this month with supplements i'll talk about but um yeah you know it it's gonna your mood is gonna be affected by your gut health and it's mm -hmm. uh it's um you know, you just have to get in there and, and work on it. There's a certainly other things, tools that you can do that you will talk about in private coaching, um, but so interesting. And then, yeah, I, I went to your conference last October, November, what mm -hmm. was the? Yeah, uh, yeah, September, last September. Uh, September. I was yeah. trying to find a picture of us and I couldn't find it. I guess I was on the wrong month. <laughs> uh, but I learned a lot about the vaginal microbiome in that, yeah. um, in that conference and I'm in perimenopause, so my hormones, you know, women's hormones are always changing, but perimenopause is a little more. So 
plus I have this history of mold and I really have chronic candida that I frankly haven't fully like taken care of. So it's making some like cross connections, you know, already my hormones are a little unstable and that hormone changing will change the microbiome and the pH. Um, and then you throw in my microbiome being off or having more candida and it's, it's trouble. So it's something I'm really having to stop in and focus on um, right now. So again, just kind of like, it was a reminder for me getting back to the foundations, like you still haven't finished doing that candida. There's still more you can work on, on your gut. Um, you know, just like you said, the gut is just so central. So well, and, and what you said, you know, kind of goes back to our, to our premise that the recondition step is really important. That has to be really well established, right? Which is, in your case, you didn't get the candida in, under control just yet, right? So your microbiome hasn't been completely reconditioned yet. And if it's not a completely reconditioned and you don't reinforce those changes to make them more permanent, it'll just keep kind of going back and forth. You know, there'll, there'll be times of improvement and then times of, of uh, setback. And in some cases it can be significant setback. So that's why we keep pushing. Like you've got to always constantly be working on the, the ecosystem within your microbiome because we just have too many things around us that disrupts the microbiome. Right. Uh, so many things to right? throw it off. Yeah. And yeah. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's constant work. It's no different than a garden outside. You can't just plant the garden once and expect forever for the garden to be, uh, you know, producing uh, amazing uh, food and plants for you without any issue, right? You, you have to keep tending to it. So your gut is a very complex garden with lots of negative influences around it. And you got to keep tending to the gut. You know what? I, it's so funny you're saying this is such a good, because I need to hear it. Like, I don't take my meds for consistently enough. And I'm just about to like present how you can take it more consistently. Because honestly, like, my gut has gotten so much stronger that I don't have like a lot of bowel issues. So I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. But then yeah. I, if I'm getting a, a candida in fact, or a, like a vaginal infection, then I do have something wrong. So it's like you can't, and there's many clients, I'm sure you've seen this too, Karen, like who, are like, no, you know, I poop every day, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it does seem to be fine in how that functions, but there's still tons of other symptoms. And if we go in and test, we usually find trouble. Yeah, and, I, and that's an important point because I ask people all the time that, uh, and there are some national surveys that, that show that a certain percentage of people, uh, a, a pretty big percentage of people will, will um, uh, ascribe to not having any gut issues at all. And yet when you dig into it a little bit deeper, you find that what they what they perceive as gut issues are actually outside of the realm of reality, meaning they do have issues, but they feel that it's normal to have a certain degree of dysfunction, right? And they've kind of lived with it. Um, right. and, and I hear that all the time when I talk to people, right? Well, they'll say, no, I don't really have any gut issues. Um, oh, as long as I don't eat this, 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 and they, they list things. like 25 <laughs> things, exactly, right? Or as long as I, you know, don't do this or don't do that, my gut seems to work fine. Um, and, and so that's one, one thing to keep in mind. And the second thing is that not everyone presents with gut issues from gut dysfunction, right? Gut dysfunction can present in many different ways. It can be mood, it can be sleep, it can be skin, yes. uh, it can be hormones. So, so that is something to keep in mind as well, that e even if you're uh, regular on your bowel movements and all that, it doesn't necessarily mean you don't have an issue in your gut. Right, yeah, I remember a family member, my nephew was having like eczema, and my brother-in-law was like, oh, you, you know, you just put the steroid cream on it. You can do that, but you also can look like, why is that eczema happening? Mm -hmm. So uh, we, you know, Megaspore is our number one best-selling product. People are crazy about it. We're gonna show the reviews of it in a second. And it can be something you take every day. The typical dosage is two a day, but if that's too much for you, for where you're at, you can do a, a subscription every two months or something like that you know as you've said when you're traveling sometimes you can take more I tolerate really well I've never had a bad yeah. reaction so if I've been on antibiotics or something big is going on I'll take more and I love what you said like every day we are being insulted I think mm -hmm. our guts being insulted we're getting exposed to glyphosate even when we eat 
mostly organic. You know, we're getting exposed to trace pesticides in foods all the time, trace who knows what's in foods all the Heavy time. Metals, yeah, antibiotics in the water. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very antimicrobial ecosystem that we've put ourselves in. And, you know, I mentioned yeah, just like a garden you would have outside, it's important to tend to it on a regular basis. That's the beauty of these spores is they automatically do the tending for you. Um, and we've outsourced so much of that functionality to the spores. You know, there's lots of things that the spores do in our gut that we cannot do for ourselves. And that's why we, we gravitated towards these kind of strains because our whole premise when we started the company uh, was looking for microbes that do a lot of important housekeeping functions in the gut. Uh, mm -hmm. protecting the rest of the microbiome, increasing the expression of those tight junction proteins. You know, we mentioned this 40 tight junction proteins that keep those cells uh, dynamically working properly. Uh, the expression of those tight junction proteins are critical to keep rebuilding and regenerating that intestinal lining. And we don't have an endogenous way, meaning our own natural way of expressing those proteins. The spores go in and they actually stimulate your cells to create more tight junction proteins to reseal the gut, right? Mm. They also stimulate the goblet cells that produce the mucin layer to regenerate new mucus layer. So they're doing these amazing housekeeping functional things. They are like your gardener for your garden. And that's what was so exciting to us about it. And that's why we've done so much research and published so many studies around these spores because you get so many amazing beneficial effects when you just tend to that garden on a regular basis. Yeah, it's a very different product. You know, we could talk about it for two hours, but go back to some of our other resources and articles and videos, because they are very different than a lot of probiotics, which frankly most probiotics aren't doing a whole heck of a lot. So yeah. go and read up. But yeah, it's a great way to just kind of ensure during any difficult time or any time in life, like, boosting your immune system, you know, boosting that mucosal layer, like you talked about, keeping up those keystone streams, which I want to write a blog about the keystone streams at some point here. It's very interesting. Uh, so I'm really passionate about like taking things, you know, regularly that are important. So as we launch our subscription program, I'm doing just a ton, <laughs> a ton of extra value. So you'll always get, um, here, let me back up. You'll all, here, let me go forward. This is the Megaspore. You know, we just started our reviews program. It already has 15 five-star reviews. Like, it's super popular. Um, so you can subscribe just to this item, or you can, these are a couple of our new, what I consider daily essentials uh, that you can get in a kit to go month by month. So we have a multivitamin that's very clean and very absorbable. We have a fish oil, and we have a magnesium your magnesium is there's not enough that can fit in a multi so you have to kind of have it separately this is great for inflammation great for hormone building detox so just really essential and then i added a couple things in this time of covid or just you know for any flu season that comes up the biocide and throat spray that you know about kieran it's so easy yeah, to take I have one here. oh nice is... so easy to take you know kids can take it you just spray it on the back of your throat it, I find when I'm out and about in this time of COVID, like I don't feel like I'm getting sick, right? You never know like ahead of time. But if I do my little throat spray and my nasal spray, I'm like, I'm taking my vitamins. I'm like, okay, you know, I've done what I can do. I've done, you know, and I, obviously you got to sleep and eat right. But, you know, I want to be out and about. I don't want to be completely paranoid. So afterwards I'm cleaning out my nose and spraying my throat. So we added that to the kit and then you can upgrade either kit by adding a megaspore to it. So, you know, you can get just the basics plus add your megaspore or the whole immune thing plus megaspore, which is a great, a great decision. You can also get other products that you like in the one, two or three months. So like, for instance, I don't use the mega mucosa every day, but probably every other day, to be honest, I love it. This is like my true confession. I love to drink tea, but it thins your mucosal lining. <laughs> And I can feel it like it's astringent for your gut so I'll literally have like a cup of tea and a cup of mega mucosa right. <laughs> they like balance each other out it's silly but it's just a product I like or if anything feels irritated I'm taking my mega mucosa 
the mega IgG, when do I take that? A little bit more, like if something's a little bit more off, like feels like I ate something funny. Um, I love that product too. The mega pre tastes really, really good. And it, again, can, you can kind of take that regularly along with the mega spore to feed the beneficial strains. Uh, it's a great way to get some extra fiber that's well tolerated and well studied with all Kieran's research. And that's and those are those are all selected specifically to increase the growth of the keystone strains, which you're going to write oh, a blog nice. about. Um, yeah, so that is <laughs> that's the key. Note to um, self. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and th those keystone strains are very sensitive to things like antibiotics and anti um, you know antimicrobials that you find in foods uh, for as preservatives, glyphosate, you know, uh, the Roundup stuff, the active ingredient. Um, those things really devastate your keystone strains. And so the whole idea behind the MegaPre is having these specific oligosaccharides that have been clinically shown in published studies to dramatically increase the growth of keystone strains. Um, and we published a study last year where we showed when you combine the Megaspore with the MegaPre, you actually see um, almost a thousand fold increase in the, key, in the growth wow. of keystone strains, right? Massive. And that was in three weeks. Um, and, and about a 30% increase in the diversity of your microbiome. So real significant shift in that ecosystem in your garden, if wow. you will. Um, the other thing that we use a lot with the mega pre, or the, that we use the mega pre for a lot is with your kids, because kids diets are atrocious. I know even my kids diets that's are- That's a great idea. Right? Oh, that's yeah, genius. it's just so important. It's hard to get, to get them to eat fiber. Them. Anything that has fiber, okay. they reject. <laughs> <laughs> totally. They reject and, and I mean, they just don't eat well to begin with. Um, and, and this is a great time when they're younger to get those keystone strains up and get them established as part of their permanent microbiome, especially in the first seven to nine years of life where the microbiome is, is, is somewhat permanent. It's still tenuous. That's a great time to start really hammering them with things like oligosaccharides and spores to produce a more permanent microbiome. My kids take a minimum of one megaspore a day during certain times, like when rotavirus is going around or the flu season, they take two, uh, or when we travel, they take higher doses at like two. Um, but I get them the mega pre every day. I give them a half, each of them half a scoop um, on, on uh, travel days when, when I take them overseas with me. But, back in the day Thank before you. the world ended. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we used to travel a lot overseas and then at that point I give them a full scoop. Um, but with the scoop, what, what we do both for adults and kids is uh, we mix it in a bottle like this, like a shaker bottle, you know, just one scoop or half a scoop. Um, and you should start with a half a scoop, shake it up and then just kind of sip it throughout the day. Right. So this bottle around one o'clock or two o'clock, my time gets full with one scoop of mega mucosa and one scoop of mega pre. And then this becomes my go-to what I'm drinking the rest of the day. Mm. Um, you know, and you want to just kind of trickle in the, the dosing uh, and it makes a big difference, but get it into your kids. It's such yeah, getting important. used to the fiber a little bit slowly. On mm. this earlier slide, Kieran, I was laughing that mega mucosa says does not mix well with coffee. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would not make long. This one tastes the mega right? is kind of horrible tasting, but you get used to it. I, I get used to it. The mega pre tastes really quite good. Yeah, and, and so what we found is when you combine the two, it tastes great. Okay. You know? Yeah, um, I think we had that question this winter. And yeah, you can combine them. No, totally, no harm. Yeah. Just be sipping it, preferably be sipping it. Yeah. Uh, so here's a little bit more about this. This is kind of a preview. We haven't even officially launched this, but if you join any subscription now, we'll roll you into all these. So we're doing these six, what I'm saying here are Q and A's, but actually we're like workshopping it and we're going to make them more like little lessons, you know, like today Kieran did that great lesson on gut lining. So we're going to do little lessons on like the most popular topics plus take your questions. So we're, we're trying to make it a little juicier. We're going to do some quizzes for you. Uh, it's really a chance to work with me privately and we'll take do little case studies. So it'll be a lot of fun. And that starts in August. You get it. So, you know, you save money just on the subscription. If you hit $97 shipping is free. We will donate also 10% to this organization dream core. And they have this great campaign Karen, you'll like to hear about it's, you know, in, in, economically disadvantaged areas, it's also more polluted, generally speaking. Uh, air quality is worse. So they're really working on like improving air quality. 
in certain neighborhoods, like really grassroots. It's really nice. You know, we need that grassroots effort. Like who's doing mm -hmm. that? So some of it will go to that. Um, and then we have some other perks, a bunch of it, like our private client library that you can access. So those are some things going on. How, some, how long are you running this promotion, Bridget? Uh, I think it closes the 27th of this month. So we're kind okay. of just talking about it a little a little early. So you guys probably know me, but I'm just making you read these lovely quotes about me <laughs> because I think working with me like on your actual case is going to be a really rewarding. So I'd love to have you. And I'll show you a little bit how to navigate um, the site in a second here. Um, I'll show you. And then maybe Karen and I, you, you can wrap up on, we kind of shared how we use some of these products, but if you, we have any last um, thoughts, because I think, like you said, you have so much knowledge and sometimes people are like, but I don't know what to buy. We, you know, we have a, a two different gut guides so that that can help. We've got some previous yeah. blogs. You just mentioned how to use it for kids or, you know, for a couple of the products, which I thought was fantastic. Um, Oh, we have a couple of questions maybe. Yeah. Answer. And let me make one, one other proposal too. I love that you're doing that 10% of your, of the, the purchase, uh, during this promotion, you're sending to, um, the, uh, Dream the Core. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we, we can, um, as a company, then we would, uh, we can match that as well. Oh my God. You're so yeah. Oh, you're so happy. It's such a sweet, you know, I like, I'm trying to learn about these small organizations, right? Same here, like, yeah. They're doing like the real work, you know, that's that, not that's, easy work to do. It's not, and it's so critical. And that's exactly the kind of work that we love supporting. Um, so let us know during this promotional period, what that total amount is. And then we'll, we'll, we'll Oh, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. And as time moves forward, I'd like to find some programs that a friend of mine is starting one just to get more like, like a smooth, you know, like a smoothie machine ingredients to families that are low income. Like I love that idea. So we're, we're on the lookout now. Awesome, um, good. You know, it's, I think Black Lives Matter has really given me a push to be like, you yeah. can't put that off. You got to go get, get on it right now. Um, so I'll just show you a couple things before we close here. Um, it's pretty easy to subscribe. So here's the mega spore. Um, and so you just choose, do I want it one time or do I want it every month, every two months? So it's super easy and you'll get like a control panel. If you want to pause it, you can, it, you know, if you want to stop it, you can, we're not going to like trick you <laughs> into having it forever. <laughs> if, you know, something comes up and you need to pause it. Um, let's see if I can find the other kit. So here's our new kits I talked about, and this is full price. So that price will come down when you make it to a subscription. And I'll just show you real quick how to add the Megaspore. Took us so long to get all this work. <laughs> I know, time. it looks awesome though. You guys did a great job. <laughs> yeah, so this is the basic kit and then you can add the Megaspore. And then if you choose, I want it once a month, it will lower the price. And then we just know that you're on subscription. So we'll just later contact you and say, Okay, here's how to access your Q and A's and your bonuses. So we'll just know that there's really nothing to do. And same thing, you can just pause it if you need to or, or whatever. Um, you could probably even redirect the shipping, like if you go from away for the summer or whatever. So it's really easy. We're just trying to just um, get that habit going. And yeah, you could do the same with the prebiotic or most everything i think a mega guard i love so i think we've got that on i think the only thing we don't have a subscription is mega micro balance because yeah. it's not usually something you take forever you take regularly yeah and i, yeah. I just want to make a comment on the subscription part um it, it's it's really critical because one of the things with the gut and, and i hope this message has come across already in, in what we've talked about but it's about tending to it regularly, right? It, the gut is not something that you fix once and then you just leave it alone. Because like we said, there's things around you all the time that are disrupting the gut. And, and so compliance becomes really important in having really good outcomes for the long term. Uh, when we at, at Microbiome Labs added subscription type models, we found that compliance increased dramatically and then people's outcomes increased dramatically because of that. Uh, because we are all bad at routines. We're all bad at keeping up with things. I'm notorious with that. 
if I don't have my supplements in certain areas of the house where I see it every day in at certain parts of the day, and then I forget, you know, and um, and and if I forget long enough, I start to feel the impact. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's a yeah, thing. Yeah, and, and that's something we're going to educate on. Like, where where do you where do you put them? When do you take? Them? Like you said, you take them around one o'clock. You mix yeah. them. So now you know. After lunch, I mix my things up. So there's totally. different triggers like that. Yeah, and like mostly we want to take the thinking out of like like who was it Einstein or who was it who always wore the same black suit mm -hmm. like right. they don't want to think about it. they don't waste their time thinking about stuff like this like just take Total, it yeah. I actually haven't seen this yet but you know our review program is pretty new one uh, I thought this was a, so eight five star reviews and one four oh, yeah. star review like people How are really happy day. with <laughs> people are really happy with it uh maybe it was because it doesn't taste good but it can't taste good because of what's in it <laughs> it's like a little yeah. intense what's in it yeah. um but i think yeah it, i love the product i think right now it's our second best selling item in the shop and it's about it's out of stock for you guys it's right it's now. our second best in our company in general too um and it's important to mega score um, a year and a half ago, became the number one best-selling probiotic in the health practitioner space. Oh, awesome! Um, Congratulations! Thank, thank you. In the U.S. and um, uh, and and then Mega and Mega Mucosa is now the, our second best-selling product. So, in terms of uh, efficacy and clinical validation, those two are are top notch. Yeah, and if there's ever a problem, you know, just first of all, we have 30-day money back, and also just contact us like I will I answer those kind of questions myself if my team you know if it's complicated yeah you know if you've had a you talked about over time like if you've had a really unhealthy gut for a really long time sometimes you know two capsules of megaspore is gonna send you into some detox reaction I still think it's rare but it could happen so we're here for you if you get those kind of things we have a whole side effect ebook Sometimes though, frankly, you're having an emotional response, which I get, and you just need mm -hmm. someone to like answer your question for you. Totally, so yeah. we will, we will do that for you. Uh, so super easy. And yeah, you know, you guys are our best selling products uh, for, for good reason. Um, any question? Um, Tina's asking, does it take care of parasites? Not, no, not, not specifically. No, no. might be I, some beneficial, like crowding them out though. Yeah, I mean, you know, number one, parasites are, are also a normal part of your microbiome. So it, it depends on whether or not you have really egregious growth of parasites, right? And that's important to test through a parasitology test. Um, now, it, you will, if you have an egregious overgrowth of parasites, you probably want to go more specifically to an antiparasitic. But while you're doing that, you need to support the rest of the microbiome still because whatever space the parasite leaves, needs to be taken over by good functional bacteria. So that's the part that we have to keep thinking about is anytime we're trying to remove something, uh, we have to immediately replace that space, that real estate with good functional bacteria, or that something can come back pretty easily. Um, now, in general, with, para with kind of the parasitic uh, issues that we tend to have in a place like North America, the um, your immune system does a pretty good job of kind of targeting these parasites and which is one of the things that that megaspore will support so in that kind of really low level parasitic uh, complications it may be helpful but it's not specifically anti-parasitic okay okay perfect well thank you so much for your time here and we always learn so much from you we're gonna spread this spread this far and wide because i love <laughs> people to just learn with you like they, they really love it and yeah, you can see from all of the reviews, people are really getting better on this stuff, which is ultimately, you know, what we want for you. So thanks to everyone who attended live and your questions. Thanks to you and Bethany, and we'll be in touch, Kieran. Have a great week. Thank you, Bridget. Thank Bye. You, Bye.